once again, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you uh, from wherever you're joining in. Uh, welcome to this session on the rise of chief AI officers. And uh, thank you for taking out a time on the uh, weekend. Uh, thank you all for joining in. We are recording this session, so the recording would be made available after uh, this session on our website. We'll be also emailing you the link. We're also live streaming this on LinkedIn. Uh, so uh, you can share it with your friends later on. So just to kick this off, I want to uh, set the context on what's going to happen in the next 30 minutes and also invite uh, the gentleman I have with me. As we all know that AI is becoming the talk of the town and it's widely projected in numerous uh, studies that by the end of this decade, there'll be a steady rise in dedicated leadership to spearhead AI ventures specifically across each enterprise. And to educate and enlighten us, uh, we have with us today uh, the CTO of Polestar Solutions, Ankit Rana. Hey, Ankit, welcome. Hey, Vizan. Thank you. So brief about Ankit, uh, he also heads the innovation and development cell at Polestar, and he helps bring uh, applications to life that deliver actionable intelligence across uh, the entire analytics spectrum, across numerous industries. I think he'll be talking about that a bit today in today's session. And he has a deep understanding of all things tech from data management, predict uh, predictive modeling, to statistical analysis, to generative AI. So even after the session, if you feel free to re uh, like to reach him out, you can always reach him out over LinkedIn. Uh, there's also a QR code, which you can scan on his uh, you know, virtual background to sign up for our future sessions as well. With that, uh, Ankit, I would uh, you know leave the floor to you and why don't you set the context and tell our audience what you have planned for today. Hey, thank you for, for inviting me. Let me tell you what I have planned for today's session. So the word CAIO, Chief AI Officer, it's emerging as a very pivotal role bridging the gap between the technology and the business, driving AI initiatives that align with corporate strategy. The session will include, will provide a deep dive into why more organizations you know, are looking for bringing a new role altogether into their C-suits, which is CAIOs. And what can be the tangible impacts on their business strategy and the outcomes with this role? To discuss this in detail, I would like to invite our guest to today's uh, podcast, Jay. Welcome, Jay. Th so, thank you so much, Ankit, for having me and looking forward to the session. Thank you. So tell me, uh, let me tell me, uh, let me tell you guys about a bit of Jay. Jay is a principal technology architect, AI, ML, and Gen AI with Microsoft. At Microsoft, Jay is responsible to drive adoption, monetization of AI, ML, and generative AI capabilities across industry domains, and has played a key role in implementation of large-scale AI-driven implementations. So once again, welcome, Jay. And uh, for that. thank you for the nice introduction. And uh, this is awesome that we are talking about something I think uh, which I, I believe most of our audience is interested, but I think it just goes beyond our today's audience. I think all of us have a, a keen interest uh, uh, in like what is AI and I think how this role is going to play a pivotal role in our journey, probably even beyond our, you know, more uh, just professional side of our life, right? So I'm looking thank forward to the session. Uh, thank you again, uh, Ankit and Post and Thank you. So just to kick this off, I think uh, we had a small video we wanted to play for the audience and just wanted to make it a bit interactive. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen, play a video, and then I think Ankit has a question for all of us. Uh, so. Ankit, could you confirm if you guys are able to see my screen? Oh, my God. 
Pupi de Bum Bum Babo Babo per la coscienza della sicurezza. So yeah, back to Ankit and Jay. Uh, and I think that's the question for all of us. So, how many of you, how many of those, you know, clips did you think were real ads or scenes from a film or just plain simple AI generated? <laughs> You can send in your answers through the chat. Yeah. Okay, I can see some answers coming in. Great. So Jay, let's uh, let's start. So you know, for to start with, I have a kind of a rapid uh, fire questionnaire for you, right? And uh, with your permission, let's start with that, right? Yep, of course. Let's start. Great. Great. So. Jay, if if we're in a very normal or a you know normal statement, what is the biggest barrier as per you for any kind of a AI initiative or a AI success in uh, you know any organization? Is it a tech or people? I think it's people. <laughs> and uh, so, will AI disrupt every industry or just a few? I think it's going to impact in the, all the industry in a positive way uh, may not be distracted it's really depend uh, it's a, one of probably the greatest tool going to be for us and it just depends how you want to use it in respective organization mm -hmm. what as per you is the biggest uh, air risk uh, privacy safety and security Good. Uh, will AI replace more jobs or create more um, it will create new jobs, but that will require upskilling. Right. Will companies without AI fall behind? At some point of time, if they don't consider AI as their, you know, one of the primary weapon to, you know, use, uh, they will fall behind considering uh, considering the competition in the market. And in five years, will every company have a position like CAIO? Um, it depends. It may not be CAIO, but they will need some kind of a leadership position to drive and manage the AI initiative. And, and as you as you just asked in the last question, to be competitive in the market. It may not be CAIO, but some form of leadership role has to be there okay. to manage AI. Right. right. So that's, that's complete our, you know, our rapid fire. And uh, let's jump on to our today's major agenda. What is, you know, CAIO? And uh, so in the latest news, we were, you know, reading about NASA hiring CAIO and a lot of big healthcare firms also have started this particular designation. Why is a need, why there is a need of CA officer in the organizations now? So, yeah, I think that's a great question. And, uh, what I would like to encourage us to think about, uh, like about our near future and long term future, right? I think every company or every business is going to be required some shape of AI in one way or other way. AI is just not going to be like a technology function. I think it needs to be infused in every business DNA, right? Now you are trying to infuse something so new, so uh so cutting edge in every business DNA, you would need someone to lead those kind of initiative, make sure they understand the business domain, as well as can speak the AI or the technology languages and make sure it is uh, understandable throughout the organization, internally and externally both, right? 
So, so that's one of the reason I think chief AI, AI of chief AI officers type of a role are on rise across you know industry domains. But at the same time, I think may not be every industry need a typical chief AI officer. But again, as I mentioned earlier, there has to be some kind of a leadership role. It could be you know head of AI or could be head of product. But all this role needs to have the AI influence and AI literacy embedded so that they can drive business innovation and organic growth. If that makes sense, Ankit. No, totally, totally makes sense. So, as per that, uh, Jay, is it good fit for all kind of a businesses? And you know, what yeah. do you see in the market as per the latest trendings there in the market? Another great question. So, I think uh, when we talk about industry of all sizes, particularly for the large industry, I see definitely there is a trend where they are hiring chief AI officer to lead multi-million dollar business initiatives where AI is the key driver, key driving factor, right? But at the same time, there are small and medium-sized businesses who may not need an chief AI officer or AI COE immediately. But down the line, when they are kind of, yeah, and because some of them are already adopting AI from day one, right? Particularly the digital native businesses, if you look at, right? So they already have AI embedded in system, but I, I, I personally think that as future, in the future, there will be a time, every C-level business suite has to have AI, uh, you know, efficiency in their, uh, in one of the key scale set in their uh, array, right? A array of weapons uh, in when they think about how they go to market. And I think uh, it will be a key, key role to play, whether you call it a chief AI officer or you call it a different name, that's probably a separate discussion, but I think it will be required for all type of industry shape and side at some point of time in future. Some industries uh, or some specific organizations are, uh, as they are realizing this sooner, they are creating those roles and uh, function today, and some may be in, in future time. And I think that future is like, we're talking about not two to three years, may not be five years. Great, great, great. I, I agree with that. It may not be a very, you know, as as people are saying, AI is here now, right? Yeah. So, as per you, is this will this role be a you know a business role or a technical a tech functional kind of a role? Yeah, um, and I think uh, that's another great question because everybody thinks AI is just for technology nerds, right? And I personally think AI is for all, right? I think if you think about the situation, there is. No business today, they can ignore the importance of data. and But then guess what? Data without taking any action or ability to generate insight very quickly and make business decision using uh, those data is not good enough, right? So I think that's why AI is going to be important for every business, for every organization, for everyone. And truly the way we are trying to commoditize AI, you know, so for an example, Microsoft Copilot, right? So everybody able to access this, you know, uh, uh, this AI capability. And I think we are kind of taking baby stone towards AGI, artificial general intelligence. And we are getting into the era of intelligence uh, uh, very soon. So I think at some point of time, all of us will be AI using AI in some way, some shape and form to drive our day-to-day -day productivity as well as making business decision much faster, much organically, if that makes sense, Ankit. No, great, great words. Uh, I, I, you know, echo you on when you say that AI is for all, right? But if AI is for all, what kind of a support structure do you think uh, CAIO will be needing in the organization? Yeah, I think that's a great, uh, another point of view, right? Like, how do you start this thing, right? Uh, because it's still very greenfield for most of the organizations, right? Yeah. So I think it's really start uh, with, if we are building a chief CIO, uh, chief uh, AI, uh, AI officer type of a organization or that capability, I think it really starts with where the business values are, right? What type of product or what type of services the company is providing. And I think the first or primary responsibility should be uh, the chief AI officer should be understanding that and, and then figuring out what are the AI technologies and capabilities that this specific organization would need to deliver those business values with innovations, right? Mm -hmm. So I think having ability to measure success uh, parameters and return on investment will be the primary responsibility of chief AI officer. 
And that's the reason I think it's a business role. It's not a typical technology role, right? Technology is still going to be embedded in that day-to-day -day role, but then at the end of the day, it has to deliver business value on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's where the primary focus uh, or the strategy and vision for this type of role should be. Great, great, great. Yeah. So every role in business or organization has to do with something with business. But can you can you throw some more light into the more key responsibilities that are expected from this particular role? Okay. Yep. Great, great question. I think, of course, the first responsibility is being ability to deliver business value and return on investment, right? Uh, I think that will be the key factor. But other key responsibilities, of course, include you know, the responsible AI side of it. I think all of us uh, in Sham, Shape and Form, we have experiencing AI in a day-to-day -day basis, but at the same time, there is huge concern from enterprise uh, business uh, entities, like how do you make sure your data is secure, safe, and and, and from a data privacy standpoint, there are concerns and getting action, uh, answers on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Because AI is changing so quickly, so rapidly, it's difficult to keep up the pace, uh, particularly for business leader. So I think one of the key responsibility would be for the uh, this role to work with business and implement those you know responsible AI feature or trust of the AI feature uh, for a specific organization because every organization or every uh, business will have a different type of a need around responsible AI. I think that's the probably the second most important uh, responsibility going to be. Others will be of course the continuous upskilling. Right, one of the key aspects I think using. Uh, adaptation of the AI, how quickly we can adopt, uh, you know, the new AI skills. And that's probably going to change, you know, every three months or every six months with new models coming in every day, right? The way we are thinking, the way we are trying to do work today, that's going to be different in another one year or so. And I think that finally, of course, access, accessing the latest technology trend and implementing, bringing those and infusing into the respective organization products and the service offering. I think that will be another key aspect, right? So if you uh, combine all of these, I think it's again going back to people, process and technology. And that's why this is a tip, not just a technology role. It's a, it's a people-centric business role that needs to support all the levels of organization, if that makes sense. No, no, rightly, rightly mentioned uh, there. And you just, you know, touched upon an era of, you know, three to four months of evolving any kind of a model and a year, uh, you know, where new technologies can come up and everything up. But I want to like to, you know, ask a question about what can be the long-term benefits to the organization from this role or how they're going to see it in a long-term uh, perspective. Yeah, you, you are absolutely uh, spot on. I think there are two ways to think about it, right? There are some organization, they already have some shape and format of this role already there. So it's not completely greenfield from them. I think for them, from a long-term standpoint, uh, going back to that business value delivery is going to be key, right? So I think uh, for those organizations, they already have something like some some of these roles already embedded. I think it's very important to reaccess the role, maybe revamp and look at what are the latest AI trend happening throughout in, in, the, in the technology industry and how the uh, chief AI officer can bring those roles and support the uh, uh, continuous business innovation, that would be key. But And the companies which are greenfield, I think that's where probably we need to understand where the AI can make most impact and start coming up with a, let's say, 30, 60, 90 days plan. And then uh, for long term, what are the different new AI product, product offering and where AI needs to be infused? that sort of a roadmap and planning will be super impactful for this role. So I think it, probably it's not a very good answer uh, for this question because I personally think it really depends on the specific organization, what type of product and use cases they're bringing and it varies. But I think uh, a continuous evaluation of the planning roadmap, how, how the ROI is going to look like from each of these situation, I think uh, a solid framework and continuous monitoring of that will be key for the long-term success of this role. No, great, great. Uh, I'm sorry <laughs> there. Uh, but yeah, a lot of uh, we talked about what is the expectation from this role. Now, you know, what kind of a support would this role also be needing or, you know, how can organization helps uh, in setting up this particular COI for or chief AOI? 
Yeah, that, that's a great question. And I think it has to be top down, meaning if uh, a company is thinking about uh, setting up a chief AI officer type of a role and organization, it has to come from their CEO or board of direction, uh, board of directors, right? Because without the top level support, this role cannot be success because primarily when you're talking about changing our day-to-day -day operationalize uh, the way we operationalize our work, right? So these require people support and process support, just not technology. I think technology is the easy part. Main support is required. How do you think about your day-to-day -day work? How do you completely change the human behavior around those, uh, you know, uh, work uh, the way you are working today, right? So I think it has to be top down. It has to be supported by the CEO, CIO, or the other C-level executive uh, suites along with the, and it's probably required some upfront investment as well. And that's the reason I was going back to that ROI calculation again. I think from day one, it's important to understand when and how we can, uh, that this role can deliver, start delivering the business value. It may not be immediate depending on size and the shape of the organization. Some of the cases, it may be immediate, particularly for digital native kind type of companies, but for some of the large, you know, healthcare or finance company that I work with, it, it is going to take significant amount of time. And I have some significant amount of time, not like, uh, you know, decades is probably, we are talking about 12 to 14 months kind of a time frame. So I think there is upfront investment and support required for the long-term benefit of this organization. Great, great, great. And what should be the execution strategy of this CAI? Yeah, that's a great question again. And I think we kind of touched upon that and it's again varies where they are on the maturity, AI maturity crop. So if it is greenfield, I think we has to start from whiteboard, right? To figuring out what are those immediate opportunity where AI can be super impactful, sort of coming up with a 30, 60, 90 days plan. And if it is brownfield, meaning some of the company, particularly Raj company, they already have in shape and format. I think it's going to, uh, again, going back to whiteboard, but in a different outlook with, okay, these are the areas we are already using AI, but then probably it's not consolidated or there is maybe gap with the governance or responsible AI kind of stuff. So how uh, AI COE leading by a chief AI officer can help in this area. So we probably have to come up with those kind of capabilities uh, and then having the uh, chief AI uh, officer leading those strategic initiative across the organization. I think that could be the execution part, but it's again, really a deep dive question depending on the specific uh, situation of the those uh, organization. And uh, uh, we need to probably take a deeper look and come up with a better strategy depending on where they are on the AI maturity curve. So, yeah, I think, Ankit, you have some of the great question, but I know you are personally leading some of this transformation across industry, right? Uh, and you have a lot of experience. What I wanted to ask you, where do you see some of these trends going uh, some of these trends across the industry, right? Not just, you know, healthcare or finance. Do, do you want to share some of your experience with us? Right. Uh, you know, right. I, I would say, uh, you know, it would evolve over a period of time, right? And uh, as I keep on saying that evolution, evolution is being both We live in this era. We have seen, uh, you know, evolution of technology over the era. Uh, greatly, I, I uh, remember my college days when, you know, we used to pay for incoming on to phones and, you know, we used to have landlines from there till now. And even in the technology side, you know, I'm talking about my development days where we used to only code on the basis of the books that we have, right? Then came the Google era and now it's about the GenAI. Today also what I see in the uh, industry Gen AI evolution and the evolution of, uh, you know, the, the adaption of the companies to Gen AI, it has been a greater side of it. And that's because of, you know, the rapid evolution and, you know, availability of the resources, you know, given by companies like Microsoft, where, you know, people can directly jump onto the use cases, do a trial test and, you know, to see if, they are, if it is, free, uh, you know, fitting their organization. If not, again, do the R&D. And that kind of evolution is something which I see a lot more there. And definitely, the you know, the role like CAIO uh, will definitely help there uh, to the organizations. That's, that's uh, great. And 
yeah and i think it's it's a uh, it's a uh, really interesting the way you uh, you know thought about this right and i think i just share some of the links in chat for our audience it's basically coming from world economic forum i think we're going back to some of the questions that you were asking me at the beginning of the session like uh, is this role make sense for everyone right uh, i think i'm uh, what i want to encourage everybody to think about this it's just not about chief ai officers right it's also about how the future of job of our personal life is changing. So if you read some of this report, and again, it is coming from World Economic Forum, 25% of our job is going to change and impacted by AI and technology in another uh, like few years. So I think it's very important for us to recognize that fact, continue to upskill and basically embed AI in every hour, you know, as I said, AI for all, right? AI embed in our day-to-day -day life, not just from Joe's perspective. So that's just my point of view. I wanted to share with you and rest of the audience, if that makes sense. Definitely, Jay. I totally agree. It is uh, not something like we have to you, uh, we have to allow AI to come to in our day-to-day -day life. It is already there. As it's you already say. here. AI is here now. Right. We are using AI in terms, uh, you know, in one form or another. It's only about how do we evolve on AI part, AI journey more. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Yes. So I believe. So I think we are kind of uh, end of the session. Do you want to open it for Q&A the, with our uh, wonderful audience? Yes. So audience members, you can type in your uh, questions for the speakers. I can see already, uh, you know, the question has come up. I don't see any question. Maybe I'm not looking at the right can, chat, but can you? Uh, I'll just uh, read. Yeah, yeah. For the companies hesitant to invest in CAIO, what are the key early indicators that they should look for to know when it's time to create this firm? Interesting question. Very interesting question. And I think uh, time is now, right? Uh, but again, I don't want to just call it CAIO. You can call it uh, from a naming perspective, you can call it head of data or maybe head of AI products or anything. But I think the, what Ankit was asking me earlier, that's important. Uh, from an indication standpoint, are you struggling to infuse AI in your every product offering or service offering, depending on which type of company you are, right? What are your struggle and concern with responsible AI or start of the UI? You would need a leader or some kind of a team who can manage and answer those questions on a day-to-day -day basis for your business and make sure business is well aware and able, able to you know, infuse this in their DNA as they are progressing you know, with this AI journey. So if you see some of these questions are coming on a day-to-day -day basis, definitely you will need this role in some shape and format to help your organization. Let me pause there and see if that answer makes sense and if you have a follow-up question on that. I don't know who asked the question, but please feel free to ask more follow-up question. That was a great question, by the way. Uh, so I don't see a follow-up. So that was from okay. okay, I see another question from Amandeep. So you mentioned AI for all. I think uh, that is directed towards J. Yeah, I'll just read it completely. You mentioned AI for all, and we're reading about AI democratization too. Then yep. do you think the role of a chief AI officer might rise, but also become, become redundant soon since AI capabilities will get embedded across all departments? Uh, a very, very, again, great question, right? So I think there are two ways to think about it, right? So if you look at, let's say, uh, let's take at another business function, let's say finance, right? So finance is part of every, every organization, every department. It's just not the CFO's responsibility, for an example, right? But still, you have a CFO to lead the finance activities, make sure you are compliant in, from a finance standpoint, depending on which type of business and roles and you are playing, right? I think it would be the same for chief AI officer as well. As AI is getting infused in every business, of course, business is going to use his own type of AI product. Maybe each business using different types of AI model. But you will still need a leader in your organization to make sure it is following the overall company policies, governance, or and if you look at now each country is like producing their own AI policy. For an example, Europe now just uh, started publishing multiple Euro European country their AI policies. India PMO office just published their AI strategy for next ten years. So if you see, there will be a major legal compliance kind of stuff also going to happen very soon 
where each company has to adhere AI policies similar to tax policies in the respective countries, right? So I think that's why our dedicated role will be helpful. Whether you want to call it chief AI officer or not, that's a different discussion again. But you would definitely need a dedicated role to not just manage the day-to-day -day operation, but some of these overall initiatives and programs at, at the overall company level, if that makes sense, Amandeep. I'll, I'll add to what you said, uh, Jay. It's not only about operations and all. The, as you also mentioned, what is the long-term role for CAIO? CAIO the long-term role will also to evolve what currently you have with the help of AI. And right, uh, so as uh, you know, Quotient itself says that we will democratize AI to everyone, but they are primarily the users of AI, right? And the CAIO's responsibility will also become to evolve the use cases because as we go on, and even in the analytics, we say is that, you know, the analytics is a journey and similar goes to AI. AI is also a journey. Once you, you know, solve one problem, there lies another one. And this is the way it will evolve out. Wonderful. Thanks, Ankit. Thanks, Jay. And um, I'm, you know, super excited about, you know, the time to come because uh, if we think about it, uh, you guys are telling the time is right now. We are already seeing Chief AI officers role rising. And the, so now there is an end goal. Uh, at an education level, colleges and schools have already included AI in the curriculum right at the root level. And so now you know, have the start, you have where you're going to go in the corporate level. At an administration, you have not just corporates, but you also spoke about how world governments and leading uh, bodies of the world are actually using this. So AI is, and, and this, yes, uh, we did address the question about AI replacing jobs and create the new AI jobs getting created. So it's going to be an exciting future for all of us. And uh, I'm happy to be alive at this time and seeing so much of transition as Ankit, uh, you said that you rightly pointed that these are those major tectonic shifts that we have seen in our generations right after, you know, the birth of Google and then the internet and sorry, the internet, the Google and now the AI era. It, yeah, I think you are spot on, uh, Fazan. But I also want to add, I think some of the key things, I think this is still a little bit different, right? If you look at the industry evaluations in past, it was always uh, in the hand of, you know, few specific set of peoples, right? You know, you know, across the, you know, our, in our society. I think AI, I personally, and this is just my personal opinion. I think with AI, we truly totally have the ability to uh, everyone can use this as their day-to-day -day company and, and do things that is beyond our today's capabilities. So think about situations where we still do spend a lot of time on mundane stuff. You can use AI to look into or, or cover that for you and you focus on more creativity uh, or more you know, analytical thinking, creating probably the next best uh, kind of a product uh, that you want to do, right? Um, I mean, I'm a personally a huge sci-fi fan and I always go back to Marvel, you know, uh, and some of those stuff like the, I, I, I think it's still, those things looks like, you know, distant future. But if you think if you go back like hundreds of years back, you know, we, we could not even think we can do our, this kind of session virtually, which literally across globe. Now we are able to do it with the technology and ML pen. So it's still a tool. It's all up to us. How do we use it? But I think we have a huge potential in front of us for all of us. Again, not just, you know, some technology nerds or some large tech, tech companies. For all of us to uh, take advantage of this and really make, uh, you know, a different way of uh, life out of it, right? So that's just my personal thinking. Just wanted to add what you and Ankit rightly, you know, pointed out. Wonderful, and yes, uh, you rightly pointed, and and I do remember our discussion earlier regarding you know space economy and you know how that's going to change so but i think we'll leave that for another session for a few yeah that's another i think uh, interesting discussion for our audience could yeah. so uh, i don't see any other questions but uh, audience members you can always write in to us you can reach out to jay as well as ankit on their linkedin profiles as well as you can scan the qr code mentioned in the virtual background or write to us uh, at uh, marketing at polestarllp.com We'll uh, have the recording available on our website and we'll be emailing it to all of the people who are registered. So don't worry in case if your friends uh, or colleagues missed it today. Uh, but 
to all those who joined in thank you uh, for joining in and thank you for those lovely questions and uh, jay ankit uh, this was a super engaging session i learned at least took a lot of things from this session personally and i'm sure the audience uh, did as well so thank you both for you know having this uh, arranged and i just hope that this is one out of many sessions because there's so much more to learn from both of you of course we we'll look forward to that thank you so much everyone thank you all thank you, thank you.